In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a countdown timer right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we're first just going to be in by creating a brand new black solid. So we'll go layer, new, solid, go into color and change this to black, press OK, OK. And then we'll go into effects and presets and search for time. So as you can see in the text window, you've got time code. We're just going to drop time code onto the footage. So as you can see, this composition is eight seconds and this timer is running for exactly eight seconds. The problem is though, we've got all of these extra other numbers that we don't need. So we're just going to move this into the middle. We'll increase the size of the text. And then we'll just frame up this, this semicolon here. We'll put that in the middle like so. Now from here, we're just going to go into layer, new solid. We'll create another black solid. We'll drag this underneath. Then we'll select both of those layers. We'll right click, go pre-compose. You can call this timer. And then now we're just going to create a mask around that. So we're going to go into the pen tool and just create a mask around these numbers like so. And that will get rid of those first few numbers like so. Now feel free to adjust the anchor point to put this in the middle. So the anchor point should be sitting between those two semicolons like so. So that looks great, but the problem is that is counting up. We need these to count down. That's a simple fix. All we have to do is right click, go into time, and then time reverse layer. So as you can see, it's now starting at eight or seven 24 frames and counting down to zero. That looks really cool. So next we're gonna add a background color. So we're gonna go layer, new solid. We'll rename this to BG. We can press okay on this and drag this underneath the timer. Then we'll go into effects and presets and search for four color gradient. Drop that onto our background. And then as you can see, we've got all of these different points. So I'm going to change color one to a pinkish purple color. Color two can be a blue. Color three can remain pink. Color four can be a darker blue. And then we'll go down to blend. We'll increase the blend so that we've got this really nice gradient background. And then as you can see, we've got this black around the timer. So we're just going to select toggle switches slash modes and we'll change the mode from normal to screen and that will get rid of that black background. So you can see we've got this really cool eight second timer counting down on this really cool gradient background. But we want this to look more dynamic. So we're going to add a clock or a circle animation and it's going to count up as the timer is counting down. So we'll go up to this window up here. It's rectangle tool at the moment. If you drag down to ellipse tool, that will allow you to create a circle. Then you want to go into fill, select the word fill, not the box, and make sure you select the no fill option. Then the stroke you want to select, fill on the stroke, change the color to white. Then you can change the stroke width to, let's go 20 to begin with. Then we're gonna hold shift on the keyboard and just draw a circle around the clock doesn't have to be perfectly in the center because we can adjust the anchor point in a second. So if we press A on the keyboard, that will load up the anchor point and we can just put this back in the middle, like so. Now, if you wanted to, you can always increase the width of the stroke now that you've got a better understanding of what this looks like. And then once you're happy with that, we can turn the proportional grid off and we'll go into our shape layer. So we'll select the drop down arrow We'll go to add and we'll select trim paths. We're going to go into the trim paths menu. And as you can see, if I pull the start down, it's going to animate over time. But we don't want start, we want end. We want it to start off and animate on, or we can start it on and animate off. It's completely up to you. So let's start with it on and then it's going to animate off like so. So we'll keep the start at 100, the end at zero. We'll go to the very beginning, create a brand new keyframe on end at zero. Then we'll go to the very end and we'll pull the end up to 100%. So now when we play this back, you'll notice that not only is the timer counting down, you've got a visual representation of that with the circle animation. 
And of course, you can always get really fancy with that. And you can go ahead and you can copy that circle layer. So we'll go Command C, Command V. So select the shape layer, Command C, Command V. We'll go to the layer that we had before. So shape layer one, press S to load up the scale. We'll increase the scale like so. Then we'll go back into the contents, go ellipse one, stroke one. We can go ahead and change the width of the stroke down. And then you can add some dashes to this. So let's select the dashes icon, select the plus button. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this dash effect happening as well as the circle. And of course you can always change the color of one of these. So go to stroke one, color, and you can always just add a color of your choice. It's completely up to you. But there you go, that looks really cool. So now we can go ahead and we can add some animation to this to enhance this to the next level. So we'll go layer, new, null object. We'll select all of the layers except for the background. So deselect the background. Use this pick whip tool here to link that to the null object. We'll go into the null object. And basically now that we've linked everything to the null, if we pull the scale down, everything is affected at the same time. So we're going to animate the scale every single second. So we'll go one second into this video, we'll zoom in. We'll go to scale, create a brand new keyframe on the scale at 100. We'll go two frames to the left, new keyframe. Then we'll go four frames to the right, so two after the middle one, new keyframe. And then we'll go to that middle keyframe and we can pull that down or we can pull the scale up. It's completely up to you, but I'm gonna pull it down and that is going to create this screen pump effect. Then I'm just going to select all of those, right click, select keyframe assistant and select easy ease. So we get this nice subtle animation. Of course, feel free to move that last keyframe over a bit just so it slowly bounces back up like so. And then we're going to select all of that. Then we'll move over to the two second mark, go two frames to the left, command V, go to three, two frames over to the left, command V. Select all of what we've got so far. We'll go to the four second keyframe, paste, seven second keyframe, and we'll paste. So now you can see when we play this back, at every second we've got this pulsing effect and that's really enhancing those seconds passing by. So that looks really cool. Of course, we just need to go ahead and add some motion blur to this to make this look even more awesome. So select all of those layers, turn on the motion blur by selecting this make sure the motion blur icon is blue and now when we play this back that looks a lot better and there you go that looks really awesome so that is how you make this countdown effect right inside of adobe after effects thank you ever so much for watching this video i really do appreciate your support and hopefully i will see you on the next video see you there